Well, hello there everyone and welcome back to Gaming Audio Lab. Today we're doing something a little different. We're going back in time. Because the very first sound card I ever reviewed here on the channel is the Asus Xoner AE. That video was, well, let's just say a bit rough around the edges. Well, hello there everyone. Here is my first video for Anton's hardware channel. Cheap webcam, cheap mic, dodgy lighting, uh, no proper test bench, and probably the worst script ever. <laughs> None. Two years later, I gave it another go, and let's just say that I was still figuring things out. Well, hello there everyone, and welcome to another video over here on Anton's Hardware channel. But this is also the card that basically started this whole YouTube adventure for me. So, more than seven years after the very first video and five years since my last revisit, let's revisit the Xoner AE yet again. Let's test it even more thoroughly and listen it to a bit more closely with maybe a bit more experienced hearing. Would I still recommend it today? Here's the 2025 edition of the Asus Xonar AE. Back in 2018 and again in 2020 when I tested the Xonar AE, onboard audio was honestly, well, not really bad but not really good. Although improvements were being made. Lots of hiss, pops, weak microphone input, but the AE completely fixed that. And at that time, the difference was night and day. And I even concluded in my video, for 60 euros, you simply can't go wrong. Fast forward to 2025 and things look a bit different. Modern motherboards have gotten way better. Many already offer clean 24 bits, 192kHz audio, better shielding and even a decent headphone amp. So the gap between the onboard and the AE has gotten much smaller than it used to be. So let's take a look at the components the Xoner AE has on offer. Back then I praised the components, a C-Media DSP, an ESS Sabre deck, a JRC op amp and the Sirius Logic ADC, they were a big step up at the time. Today they're still fine, clean, reliable, but definitely outdated compared to what you can get now even in budget external decks. At the heart of the Xoner AE is the C-Media CM6632A, a USB 2.0 high-speed audio processor or DSP. On paper it's surprisingly capable. It supports USB audio class 2.0, so it can even handle high resolution audio up to 24 bits and 192 kHz without relying too much on their weird proprietary drivers. It also offers standard HDA and I2S interfaces and could, can output up to 10 channels and take in 4, far more than a simple stereo gamer the setup needs. Now the fact that it's a USB chip on a PCI Express sound card may sound strange, but it actually makes kinda sense. Internally the card basically works like a USB sound device that's been hardwired to the PCI Express slot. This way Asus gets to use a mature, well supported audio processor while still giving it the convenience of a PCI Express adding card. And fun fact, it's got a tiny AT51 microcontroller built right in. Basically a little CPU inside the chip which allows for firmware updates and extra features. Pretty impressive for what's essentially a budget gaming sound card. The digital to analog converter in the AE is the ESS Sabre ES9023P, part of the Sabre Premier line. The ES9023 first appeared in 2015. And it's a straightforward two-channel digital to analog converter supporting 24 bits, 192 kHz and offering around about 112 decibels of dynamic range on paper. 
You'll find it in budget decks, reference, uh, sorry, Raspberry Pi, audio heads, and portable player. It doesn't have the ultra crisp detail of the reference chips, but it's clean, low noise, predictable. Although that ES9023 is now considered to be a bit old, because since then ESS has introduced newer budget decks that offer improved audio, but are still on a budget. The cool thing is that unlike most budget cards, the op-amp is swappable. Now usually this is only reserved for more expensive cards. Swapping the op-amp can change the character of your audio without buying a whole new device. Some op-amps add warmth and smoothness while others bring more detail and clarity. It's a simple mod and it can make a big difference in how your music sounds. With the right op-amp, you can really fine-tune your listening experience. Think of it like adding your favorite topping to a pizza. You're keeping the same delicious base, but making it taste exactly the way you want it by adding tuna, anchovies or whatever you like. On the input side, the card's Sirius Logic CS53-4680C handles both the microphone and the line injects. It's 24 bits, 192 kHz chip, which even by today's standards is still very capable. It's still a big step up from the average motherboard input. The chip uses multi-bit Delta Sigma modulator, basically a clever way of oversampling a signal to squeeze out more dynamic range and reduce distortion. And finally, that famous EMI shield. Asus markets this as some kind of magnetic fortress, but in reality it's just a thin sheet of metal covering the top side of the PCB. It's not a full Faraday cage, the components are still exposed. And that's why I first thought that this was pure marketing, to make it look cool. So a while back I tested this, and here's the funny part. Even though it looks like pure marketing fluff, in practice it actually did reduce GMI, uh, sorry, GPU interference in my case. So it's not the best thing ever, but it's not useless either. Let's take a look at what happens when we actually measure the Xonar E with a proper test setup. I ran a series of Rydmark audio analyzer tests using both the front speakers, the headphone output uh, with a headphone load, just to see exactly how the card performs. And here are the results, and they are interesting. Frequency response is excellent, nearly flat from 40 Hz up to 15 kHz. Both the front output and the headphones just showed a tiny variance of less than half a decibel. In practice, that means that the AE is very neutral, it's not trying to color the sound or make explosion sound extra punchy. It just gets out of the way, faithfully reproducing what's coming from your PC. Noise level and dynamic range are middle of the road. We're looking at around minus 68 decibels noise and the dynamic range is in that same ballpark. To put that into perspective, my reference loopback device, the Creative G6, hits well over 110 decibels of dynamic range. So yes, the AE is clearly limited by its hardware when it comes to very quiet details. But for gaming or casual listening, it's perfectly fine. The total harmonic distortion is good, uh, around minus 0.027 or 30%. That's clean for a budget card. But when we add noise to the equation, that's total harmonic distortion plus N, things drop off a bit, landing at about minus 62 decibels. Now that's poor for audio file standards, but again, for everyday gaming and music, it won't be noticeable. Stereo crosstalk, which tells us how much the left and the right channel bleed into each other, was around minus 54, 56 decibels. Not fantastic, but it's kinda solid for a budget card. The results were consistent across the front speakers and the headphones. Plug in a simple 32 ohm headset or a proper line level setup and the performance doesn't change that much. 
That means that the AE can drive headphones decently enough without any adding distortion or messing with the stereo image. So what else does that tell us? Well, on paper, the Xonar AE isn't blowing anyone away. Total harmonic distortion plus noise and crosstalk are average. Dynamic range is limited. And yes, a high performance digital to analog converter, an external one, could easily outperform it. But in the real world, it's clean, neutral, and perfectly ad adequate for casual gaming, streaming, or everyday listening. Think of it of, as your trusty workhorse. Not flashy, not fancy, but it gets the job done without surprises. <laughs> During the listening sessions, I found that the Xonar AE is neutral and reliable. Highs are clear and crisp, making gunshots, glass shattering and other high frequency effects stand out without feeling too harsh. Mids are balanced and neutral, so characters' dialogues and in-game music and announcers remain clear even during chaotic moments. Bass is tight, controlled. Explosions, engine roars and other low-end effects hit with impact but never overwhelm your mix. If you listen carefully, you can occasionally hear a faint hiss in quiet passages. But it's subtle, it's not overbearing. The combination of the Sabre Deck and the JRC op amp gives a, the card a clean, slightly smooth character. It doesn't exaggerate or color the sound, but it keeps everything coherent and easy to follow. Okay, um, and now for my conclusion. To start off with the basic question, should you get one? Now for most people that answer is no. If you just want better sound or a cleaner mic input for streaming or Discord, modern USB options are simpler, more compatible and just as affordable. But if you're on a tight budget or your motherboard audio is plagued by EMI noise from your GPU, the Xonar AE can still be a meaningful upgrade. And for the wannabe audio files on a budget, it has another appeal. The op amp is swappable, which means you can experiment with swapping. Different op amps can change the characters of your audio. Because things like slew rate, noise floor, uh, the output drive all vary between these models. You can really shape how your card behaves. A higher slew rate can make fast sounds like gunshots or drum hits feel tighter. A lower noise floor keeps quiet recordings clean and stronger output drives help, helps with harder to drive headsets. For example, you can drop in the LM4562 if you want more detail and precision or go for an OPA 2134 for a smoother, warmer sound. And the beauty is these chips just cost a few euros each. With the AE you can start tinkering cheaply experiment with different flavors and if you like the process you can always move up with more expensive models or even higher end decks and so with this ending i would like to thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video and i'd like to see you in the next one see you then bye bye